great school to go to. And he wanted to major in micro, did major in microbiology. Great. So he gets to end of his senior year, and he calls me and said, I think I want to work in the lab. I said, well, I think that's what my to do. <laughs> and I said, why do you go to St. Paul? He said, I want to go to chiropractic school. <laughs> so he went four years to Miami, and he went three years to chiropractic school. He really didn't see all that, but he's happy. That's what he's doing. And he met his wife in chiropractic school. She's also a doctor here. They work in the same. There's four locations with their practice. She's in one. During first EPA, John quit that. Have you ever been there? Really just got my chocolate. And go in a restaurant, they'll just throw her just kisses on the table. Yeah, it's cool. The whole town just revolves around that. The straight line through chocolate would be her she kisses. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Good morning. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join in the call of worship. God calls us to worship. God calls us to love the unknown rather than the familiar. We come to this point of worship receiving the grace of Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Rather than trust in 
open us to your spirit, that we might serve all people with our heart on the outcome, with all the hearts of our world. We pray in Jesus' name. God rejoices when we repent and return, offering us finest wheat and honey from the Rejoice, for we will be reconciled to God and to one another. With joy, seek the honor of God's service. Facebook for spread um, so if you would like to sign up for um, supporting Carrie, but she has her operation tomorrow. So let's keep carrying our prayers this week. We'll be back for some of you. had a certain problem that we would come by and say that. And so we're trying to find meals for the family and she goes through her surgery and recovery. Um, and now, David, 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 a little talk on page. Sunday. <laughs> I got here right at the church. I was like, why I should So, um, if you don't know what page is, page, well, let's start. I am speaking about real quickly. We've had a very rich history of justice and peace making it for the present. Um, and um, one of the last things I kind of did in the last couple of years was get us involved with CAGE, which is the creation of the for justice in the moment. And it is a mix of many different Christian church congregations, from Presbyterians, Catholic, Methodists, um, they're, 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 we're, we're getting close to 30 churches or uh, partnered here in Evansville. Um, we have very strong presence. We are growing out of study. Non Catholic churches, the UD church is involved now. Um, 
the uh, community of Christ, the uh, congregation, which is kind of like some of the Genesis of all the, um, uh, but just so many different congregations, not just Christians involved. Anyway, um, first president is working with Paige, and uh, throughout the year, we will have coffee in certain church. If you're interested in this, you can go around and tell me briefly. I'll be here briefly after this service. If you want to learn more about it, I can give you some more info or my email, the genius email, or your bulletin. Um, but in addition to the cage, we're looking at other justice and executive opportunities we have here in Evansville. So please, um, if you're interested at all, or if there's something you'd like to do from home, we can, there's stuff you can do by just sitting at home and learning about the good opportunities in the community. Um, but, uh, we will have uh, different things coming down. So, at the beginning of November, we'll be in the old community crowd assembly, which will start in Cape Cod. And that would be up at, uh, I'm trying to remember the Catholic Church in the middle of First Avenue, is where we always hold the community problems assembly each year. But if you're not on our email list or if you want to be on Cape's email list, just to learn more, let me know. Talk to me after the third floor. And uh, just give me an email or something, and I'll keep you up to date. If you are around after the 10:30, we're going to have a brief formal meeting after that. Brief meeting today. Lots of meetings today. We can do it. <laughs> Thank you. The psalmist said, "O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the Rock of our salvation." Let us come into the presence and to God's giving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. O sing to the Lord a new song, sing to the Lord a new Sing to the Lord and bless God's name, and play the good news of salvation from day to day. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, and we'll be worthy to worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with Today, um, we are. Um, Blessing the musicians of the church. We start our meeting here. So we just want to thank you for sharing of your gifts and talents throughout the first lesson of your musical gifts. And we pray that God will continue to bless you in every way. Um, let us pray. Lord God, we um, thank you that in every age you give us wonderful musicians to sing for you, to guide us as we sing for you. Bless us throughout the years and continue to share the talents in worship with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us pray. God of wisdom, open us to the work of your spirit, that we may hear and faithfully respond to your holy word. Psalm for today is number 122. Please join me in reading responsibly. I was glad when you said to me, let us go to the past of the Lord. Now I feel and in your grace. Jerusalem is built as a Unity with itself, to which the power of the tribes of the world, the assembly of Israel, to the name of the There are the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and the cross of the light. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your town. For my tender and companion's sake, I pray for our spirits. Because of the power of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you. The first lesson for today comes from Hebrews chapter 13. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. 
will cause you no good. Some people that you possibly have to do anything without more. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together and again in prison. And those who are in the free as if you yourselves were slaughtered. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of grace. The fruit of this openly confess his name. We do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices, God is pleased. And from John, dear friends, it's actually the first John. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been given from God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love in us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for his. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete. We love because we first love God. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love the brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love the brother and sister. The word of the Lord. Radical hospitality. First practice of a fruitful congregation. However, before we think that radical hospitality will be given to others, I will first think about God's radical hospitality to us. Thinking about God's radical hospitality towards us starts with the words of theologian Paul Tucker, Accept that you are accepted. Accept that you are accepted. I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, well, of course, I know that I am accepted by God. But to me, he knows. <laughs> we love a joyful song in whatever form it comes. Um, you know, if you want to do no big heart, Robert Shane, the author of our book, says that a typical first moment of our walk of faith is the practice of hospitality, which involves our yes to God's love, a willingness to open our lives to God and invite God into our hearts. And that capacity of our lives and hearts to God, God involves our capacity to receive grace, accept Christ's love, and make, and make room for God in our lives. We are fundamentally the recipient of our life. We don't have to give anything, only to receive what is given to us. Our only and singular task is to accept what is given. James goes on to say, you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Can you accept that? On the surface, this looks simple, but if we are honest with ourselves, we know it is not. We are all imperfect people, raised by imperfect people, interacting with imperfect people, living in an imperfect society. And all that can leave in its way feelings of guilt or resentment, insecurities, underlying anger, and all those negative feelings that linger within grows in the process of the person's soul. James goes on to say, but the good news is that it is grace that helps us face the truth about his God and to embrace it rather than to run away. And by embracing this and offering it to God, we discover that God knows the truth about us and still loves us, and that God is a 
from this day forward for the new year. Can we accept that we are accepted? Our worth is grounded in God's grace. When we finally get it and open our hearts to the truth of God's love, we begin to receive glimpses of the peace that the world cannot give or take away. An inner assurance about our ultimate worth in God's love that surpasses understanding. To open our lives to grace, to receive and to say yes, radical hospitality begins to welcome God in our company. By willing, by being willing to be vulnerable to God and turning that brokenness within over to God. For the longest time, I didn't want to go to the I loved hospital and hospice work for many reasons. The main two reasons were these. First, I found I was more patient with people's craziness, excusing their behavior to their own. Patient where I wasn't with people in the church, not too crazy, and supposed to be normal. And you know what I mean by faith involved in their um, acting out of emotion, or knowing those people who are um, complaining all the time, self informed, or demanding. Um, there's so much that on the, within the church that doesn't reflect. What the church is supposed to be, what God desires for us. But, uh, and the second reason I love my work with the sick and dying was because, again, people often face their lives, their brokenness, with much more honesty and vulnerability. Um, and they were seeking God more earnestly in those last weeks and days of their life. They fought. Some peace and reconciliation for their hands. I found it humbling and a privilege to be invited with some of life into those deep recesses of their heart, their wounds and their brokenness, and to help them find peace. Over the years, as I faced my own brokenness and leaped into God's grace, I found I grew to love the crazy beauty that's found in the door and help me. That has made all the difference in my work as a pastor. And that is why it was so important for us to accept that we are accepted by God. By accepting that I'm not accepted by my hand doesn't mean that I don't try to continually improve myself. But it means that I understand that I'm not doing that alone. I do it with God, but I also do it in the context of the Christian community. Radical hospitality begins first between each of us and God, and then it goes between us and the person. That's the second part of the second set of radical hospitality. What do you know about your neighbor? This distance, maybe next to you, maybe the person next to you. Um, do you know? Beyond their names, you know their voice, their fears, their worries. Do you know whether they have a strong support system or if they lie at night with worry or feelings of loneliness? How vulnerable do you feel that you can be within the context of this Christian community? Can you trust them with their thoughts and feelings and questions about God with your need. We feel that this is a safe place to be vulnerable. Or do you fear that if you are known, you will be judged? And what is the church for not to be a safe haven for people who need love, who need grace, who may need mercy, who need family and connection? We have a problem of society, and that is the lack of desire to truly get to know the other Even we say hi, we may learn their name, but going for a real meaningful relationship is not something that most people learn. We have our small group, our patterns, and things that are comfortable within them. 
the radical hospitality by the other person relationship with you as a it means welcoming whomever that person may be. It means going deeper than the superficial Sunday morning. I started the sermon with the idea of accepting that God loves us as we are right now for two reasons. First, we are both in the love of God and others, and we are able to see our brokenness and can accept that God loves us despite our faults and foolishness. And second, because when we have a healthy love for ourselves, to be able to have a healthy love for others. The, the second greatest command is to love thy neighbor as yourself. And we can only do that to see ourselves and love ourselves the way God loves us. Then we can embrace and love others. God does not put conditions on us, love us, and we shouldn't do that to others. In one church in New Jersey that I worked at, I was the interim associate pastor, and so was in charge of the operation of that. We had over 20 kids in that class, and I had four other adults working with me. One of the women, her name was Joy, had recruited a girl in the community, Kristen, who I also worked as a youth advisor. So Kristen came to me for the state combination class. There's also another girl who had a great class, Susan, who had social anxiety and some learning difficulty. And her mother had come to us saying that Kristen was a bully to Susan at school. And we assured the mother that you know, we would watch out for Susan and make sure that no bullying occurred. But we never saw any bullying. But Susan's anxiety continued to manifest itself. And so one day I was reading a poem from an elder in the church, and he said, um, and he started to complain about this girl, Kristen, being in the class. And I told him that there was no bullying going on and that we were very careful to watch the kids. But he kept escalating until finally he said that I should tutor her in the conference room. Being a bit confused, I said, You want me to tutor Susan? No, he shouted at me. Tutor the other girl. Why should one of our kids have to feel uncomfortable in her own truth? Needless to say, I was totally taken aback by his words. Kristen, who struggled in a chaotic home life, who was desperate for love, who found some semblance of acceptance and stability through her life joy and the church. Now he wanted me to destroy all of that by telling her that she couldn't be part of the confirmation class and that she needed to tutor her. Just because this other girl had anxiety issues. This man was considering only one person's needs and not the needs of another broken young Cast her. She's not one of us. Who is the church for if not for the Christians of the world and also for the citizens? Radical hospitality. God showed us radical hospitality through the gift of God's Son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that he was the Lord who loved him with him. Jesus showed us who God, showed us God's love in the flesh, who showed us how to love the sinner and the outcast, even the rich young ruler. Jesus even showed love and compassion to those who were to crucify him by asking God to forgive him. Radical love. Radical positivity. We love because God first loved us. As I mentioned last week, action and deeds come out of our faith. They come forth from our love of God. That is the form of worship. And acting out of one's faith, we are called to love one another and to care for one another. As a society became more technology driven, relationships began to break down. It started way before the pandemic. 
But the pandemic has really, really increased that. The lack of face to face contact, the lack of meaningful conversation. With that came an increase in people who were not just lonely, but lonely. More people struggling on every level. This is the church's opportunity to ask what does it mean for us to offer? Radical hospitality to each other and to our neighbors within our community. Do we hear God's call to love others as God first loved us? Can we care enough to look beyond their brokenness and see them as God sees them and see them as beloved children of the Father? I think I mentioned before that I attended a webinar on the Hope and the Church. And the presenter said, the first thing this today with the community here, would they even notice? Our challenge is to become so relevant in our love and care for the neighbor that that is a good thing we this church ceased to do. Our challenge, though, is to figure out how best to do that. There are so many, I'm sure, even in the homes around us, lonely, alone, angry, sad, anxious, in need of love, in need of radical hospitality, in need of God and God's family. We love because God first loved us. Amen. Thank you. 
about the church. The same is true in the fire of prophets that apostles ruled our faith and life of the scripture in pages of the spring word, leading us in the waters of baptism, because of the prayer of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful form, Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all people Christ in order to save, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people song, and to work with others for justice and peace. You may be God gives us more grace than we can ever earn and sustains us in ways we cannot imagine. With a spirit of generosity, let us freely offer ourselves and our gifts to the world. So that we might have a perfect freedom. We offer our prayers to the members of our church. May our words and actions bring honor to your making and teach us true humility. God of mercy, we are the Lord. We offer our prayers to the needs of the world, that peace pervade in all places of conflict and violence. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers for those who suffer from sickness, mind, body, or spirit. And all those who care for them, God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died without worship in the presence of Christ and those who will die today. God of mercy, 
Almighty God, who calls to follow you with faithful, even when it challenges our relationships and the battle of the culture. Help us to release our fears, nurture us in your way, and sustain us as we seek your peace. Hear us now as we go before you into our hearts and minds. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of Thank you. 